Well, hello, and welcome to the rustic Vaughn Lodge. Yes, I'm on vacation from the stately Vaughn Manor this week, and I'm here at the rustic Vaughn Lodge, hanging out in the kitchen here. I, I don't know where the kitchen staff is. They've, they've disappeared somewhere. I, I hope they're back in time to cook me my nine-course meal for this evening. But, since they're not around, I'm going to take advantage of their absence and use the kitchen to film this fantastic video. This is another Recent Reads video. I'm going to be talking about a couple of books that I've read recently. The uh, first book that I'm going to be talking about is The Moon of Crusted Snow by Wab Geshig, Wab, Wab Geshig Rice. I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat correctly. And the other book I'm going to be talking about is Chasing Graves by Ben Galley. So this are, these are two entirely different books. Very, very different. Uh, very, di very different books. Uh, so the first book I'm going to be talking about is this one, The Moon of Crusted Snow. Uh, this takes place in Canada uh, with the northern uh, Anishinaabe, Anishinaabe people, uh, one of the uh, First Nations of Canada. Uh, and this group uh, is very northern. They're kind of kind, kind of separated from uh, other people because they're so far, so far north. And so they're sort of isolated uh, anyway. At the beginning of the story, they get they have communication, of course, and everything, and uh, they get shipments in and out, of course. But what happens in this story is one day, and this book follows uh, a couple of characters, Evan and Nicole and their family, and also uh, all their friends and other members of the community. And what happens is one day the power goes out, the internet goes out, phone reception goes out, and so they're just really cut off. and. They're not really too worried at the beginning because this sort of thing is not unknown. This, I guess, happens often enough that it's not really a big deal. Uh, but what happens is the power does not come back on. Phone reception does not return. Uh, they are completely cut off and they start to realize after a while that something has happened. Some kind of catastrophe has happened. They don't know what because they're so cut off. Uh, so what happens is that it's winter's coming on. Most of the book uh, happens during the winter. And they have to survive on their own. They have to find a way for their community to survive without any help uh, from the outside. So it's basically a st more than a, it's not a post-apocalyptic story so much as a tale of survival. Uh, uh, the, sur the survival of this community. And it's a really, really well-written book. Um, you get a real sense of the culture. Um, the characters are really well done. Uh, everybody seems like real people and that this could really be happening. Um, originally, when I picked this up, I thought it was some kind of horror story because I had seen it talked about on a couple different horror booktube type of sites. Um, but that's not what this is. Uh, there, there's a couple things in here that could be considered supernatural. There are a couple of prophetic dreams and that kind of thing. But you can take that either way. You can take that as being a prophetic supernatural dream or just a dream. It's really a tale of survival. Um, Eventually, you know, they really hit hard times up there. Eventually some people start to come up uh, from down south and uh, get involved with the community. And then there are shades of colonial, colonial, blah, I can't talk, colonialism uh, that show up in this book. Uh, it's, it's just really, really well done. And considering that this book is only a little over a couple hundred pages long, it accomplishes quite a bit and the pacing is really good. You know, in, in the start, things, ah, well, this sucks, but it's not too bad. But gradually, thing, throughout the story, things get worse. I mean, things really, really get bad in this book. Um, but somehow it's not rushed, even considering uh, the limited, uh, page, lim limited page count. 
things aren't rushed. The, the pace is really, really good. And uh, the work with the characters is really, really good. And so I, I really recommend this book. Uh, and it's interesting because I was reading this uh, right after that whole thing happened in Texas when the power went out and people were literally freezing to death in their homes. So it was, it was interesting to read this like right, right after that happened. Made me think, well, maybe this isn't so far out there, you know, <laughs> what happens to these poor people? Uh, so yeah, re I, I, I really recommend this book. If you get a chance to read The Moon of Crusted Snow, definitely do it. It's really, really good by Wab Gesheg Rice. Really, really good book. So, really recommend that one. This next one is entirely a different thing. This is Chasing Graves by Ben Galley. Uh, this is an indie indie book. Uh, I probably would never have heard of this book uh, except uh, I was uh, told about it by uh, Steve. And Steve talks about books and stuff. A fantastic channel. I will link it down below in the description box so you can go check Steve out if you haven't already. Uh, great channel. And he had chosen this for um, for his book club. And I thought, hey, why not? I'll, I'll read that book. I was a little late to the party. I didn't start reading this really toward until towards the end of the month, a couple of days ago. Uh, so yeah, I was late in getting to this book, but I'm glad I did because this is a pretty, pretty good book. You know, you never know what you're gonna get with an indie book. Uh, and this is Chasing Graves, the first book in the Chasing Graves trilogy. It's a whole trilogy. And it takes place in a fantasy world, which is sort of based on ancient Egypt, sort of. Uh, and it's, it has an interesting premise in that uh, it's about basically the city, and what's the city's name? I always forget, Araxes. In Araxes, uh, the souls of the dead, if, if a person dies in distress, which means any kind of violent death from an accident or somebody, you know, killing you. Uh, if you die in distress, your soul can be captured as it leaves your body and enslaved. So it's basically a book about enslaved ghosts. Uh, their whole economy is kind of based on enslaved ghosts. It's really interesting. So you, you're in this city and you have a bunch of ghosts everywhere doing all this manual labor and 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 things uh, because you know they don't get tired they don't die so they're kind of the perfect slaves really uh, so it's kind of an interesting I don't think I've come across that idea before so that's a that's a new one uh, yeah and it follows a couple characters a couple main characters just two main characters in this book one is cultural basalt uh, who is a lock pick and a thief an all-around roguish character. Uh, and he, his part of the story is told in first, first person. The rest of the story is not. But his is, and, that, and he's kind of the main character, I guess. Uh, so he... I'm, this is not much of a spoiler since it happens in the very beginning of the book. Caltro is killed almost immediately as the story starts, and he is in, his ghost is enslaved. So we're following Caltro's story as a ghost who has been enslaved in this city. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. And he's a great character, Caltro. You really like him. He's just this roguish scoundrel uh, and really entertaining. Uh, one thing I was not expecting, I was expecting kind of a fantasy horror thing. Not really that much on the horror, I don't think. Heavy on the fantasy. And it, there's a lot of humor in this. Um, of course, the horror is the main situation. You know, you live your whole life, then you die, and your ghost becomes a slave, and you could be like a slave for eternity. That's just a horrifying prospect in itself. Uh, so that's the main character. That's what happens to him. The other kind of main character is Nilith, who is this woman who's a warrior, kind of, and she has murdered her husband. And she's dragging her husband's body across the desert to Araxes, and uh, her husband's ghost is tied to this body for the time being, at least. So he has to come along, too. So she's dragging the body to Araxes so that she could have the ghost bound into slavery because she hated her husband that much. So she murdered him, and now she wants to bind his ghost into slavery. 
Really hated this guy, apparently. And her part of the story is actually the best part of the story. Her section of the book is the best part. Uh, all the action really happens in her part of the story. I have to say, Ben Galley, uh, as I've said before, action can be hard to do, but this guy, he knows how to do it. Uh, good writer, this guy. I was impressed, and I was impressed with his ability to do action and do action well. Um, so that part of the story was great. I mean, she goes through some extreme hardships uh, to get to where she's going. So a lot of good stuff in this book. Yeah, I was pretty happy with it. One thing I didn't like, my one criticism really is that this book didn't really end. Here's the thing, this is a trilogy, but, trilogy, but it's one of those trilogies that really is just one big novel and this is just one third of it. You know, you know how some trilogies, they have like a book and it kind of has a conclusion, and that, but there's continuing. This is just one third of a book. Literally, you come to the end and you're like, what? That's it? Because it felt just like, you know, the end of a regular chapter and you're going to go on to the next chapter. That's what it feels like. There is a, is a bit of a startling revelation uh, towards the end of this. And, but it seemed a little bit more bewildering than startling. Because, like, it really makes you feel like, okay, I've got to read the rest of this to figure out what, what that's really about. And then there's a cliffhanger at the very end, but it doesn't really feel like much of a cliffhanger because you know the, guy, the person that's involved is not going to be hurt in any way. You just kind of know it. Um, so it really just feels like you get to the end of this book and you're like, okay, where's the rest of the book? Well, the rest of the book is there. You just have to buy the next two volumes uh, to get the one... Uh, the one big book. So if I have a criticism of this, it is that. And uh, this book, I think, is a print-on-demand kind of Amazon by Amazon type of thing. Uh, only bad thing about their books is their covers do tend to curl. Get the curly covers on these because they got this kind of vinyl feeling finish. And the vinyl contracts and pulls the cover up like all the time whenever you get these type of books. So that kind of sucks. If you get it on the ebook, of course, you don't have to worry about that, and it's probably much cheaper. But yeah, so those are my those are my recent reads for today. Uh, hope you liked them. Tomorrow, I'm going to be putting up probably if my internet continues to work, and let's hope it does. It's a little spotty up here, uh, but tomorrow I'm going to be putting up my twenty greatest novels ever written uh, out of the novels that I've read. So kind of an audacious and silly thing that I did, which is the 20 greatest novels of all time. Because, you know, I, those lists always crack me up, you know, because you can't, I mean, you, you can't really do that. If you got like a bunch of great novels, you know, ranking them just seems a little silly. But I did it anyway, and I did it to the best of my ability. And I tried to be as objective as possible, which is kind of impossible, but I tried to be as objective as possible. And it was kind of fun to do. So I should have that up tomorrow. And I, you know, I did film that back at uh, Vaughn Manor. So I'll, have, I'll bring that up tomorrow and then I'll have, I'll have something else. There's, a, there's another tag, another couple tags that I need to do. I've been tagged a few times recently, so that's kind of cool. So I've got another tag uh, that I'll be having up after that. So yeah. And then of course we've got the Sunday Penguin coming up. So a bunch of good times coming up here at this old channel. So hope, hope you've had a good time. And I will see you once again, probably from here, probably from the lodge, the, the Rustic Vaughn Lodge. So yeah, thanks for stopping by. See you later, guys.